Fuck the black-hatted Hasidim strolling up and down 47th Street in their dirty gabardine with their dandruff, selling South African apartheid diamonds. Come on, your wife deserves this. <laughs> It did not take long for this crowd to grow in size Monday night, and with it, an apparent anger. Let's not get busy one night. This is a long fight. We Activist Reverend Al Sharpton and Alton Maddox had come in from outside the Crown Heights community. Following an accident where a seven-year-old boy was killed and his cousin critically injured after being run down by this car driven by a Hasidic man. Also in Crown Heights Monday night, as violence was breaking out, was Sonny Carson, who some have called a leader in the black community. It was uh, appropriate for me to show. He sees himself, though, as a former Crown Heights resident and concerned citizen, but does not think it was appropriate for him to speak out against this violence. It's appropriate for me not to allow myself to be placed in a position where I have to calm uh, our people down when we are the victims of the attacks. It, a lot will depend on what Sonny Carson uh, and, and Al Maddox and others have to say. Uh, if, if they're out suggesting uh, 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 calm and, and, and the like, then that can be helpful. As people hurled rocks and bottles and police moved in to try and control the fighting, what Even this ranking officer, as revealed in this videotape, could not convince activist Alton Maddox and Reverend Sharpton to calm this violence. Because nobody's going to ask this crowd to relax under these circumstances. But that doesn't help anything. Well, I don't care what it helps. Still, others believe that if calm is to return to these streets here in Crown Heights, it is going to take help from outsiders, help that will bring all of the people together. Your paths cross constantly, so it is in the best interest of the community for all of the leaders to be willing to sit down and work together. And as a first step, they say, to stop the violence. Reporting from Crown Heights, Tim Fisher, Channel 7, Eyewitness News.
So far, no charges have been filed against the driver of the car that killed the little girl, but that could change. Later today, a grand jury will begin investigating the case and will decide whether to indict him on criminal charges. Ron Claiborne, ABC News, New York. Right now on Eyewitness News, a new coalition is launched in the Soviet Union, prying loose the grip of the Communist Party. We will have special coverage. We will take you to the embattled Brooklyn neighborhood of Crown Heights, where police are trying to keep the peace. Plus, we'll have the latest on a New Jersey neighborhood also being rocked by violence. And our other big story tonight, the citywide effort to avoid violence in Crown Heights, a community divided by racial unrest. Take a look at this, a sea of police, 2,000 in all, on the streets last night with orders to keep the peace. Sarah Wallace has this story from the local precinct in Crown Heights. Well, Diana, tonight cops here at the 71st Precinct have been joined by officers from every single borough in this city. Hello. 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 Way to go, John. 
No, let the young man next to the mayor. Let the young man to the mayor. I am back here this afternoon in, in this community uh, as a further demonstration of my respect and concern for this total community and to express my pleasure the fact that the borough president, Howard Golden, has called together community leaders and elected officials, some of whom are here, uh, some are out there in the audience. I see Senator Montgomery, Council Member Pinkett, and, and Williams Ruffin, and others around, I am sure, Clarence Norman, uh, and uh, there, there are so many, and the people here from both communities, who recognize that there has been death and there has been pain and that lawlessness and violence is not the answer to our problem. And what we need, of course, is even-handedness. People have to be treated fairly, the same criteria of treatment for each community, not one for one community, a different one for another community. And we recognize that that is the perception of each community. Each community says the other gets too much. Each says that. And we must address not only the perception, but the fact. And the thing that we must remember most of all is that nothing, nothing good will become of violence and lawlessness. And our young people, we've got to provide some good role models for them because the future is theirs. A day like the day where the sun is shining and the sky is blue, a person of 20 or 25 years has 80, 90, 100 years to live, perhaps medical technology being what it is. Ought not waste that life because we have an inability to convey to them that we care about them so desperately. All right. And lawlessness is not the answer. All right. All right. All right. I certainly, I certainly want to echo the sentiments of Mayor Dinkins and to say to you that we met this morning with clergy, with elected officials from this community, as well as community leaders, that we are united in one referendum. We have decided on a statement, and I'd like to read this statement. We have the support of all of the people who are together with us this morning. We, the leaders of the Crown Heights community, speaking for the overwhelming majority of our people, when we say with one voice, enough blood has been shed, enough hatred has spilled into our streets. We must work as one to restore peace to our community and to heal our wounds. We must stop the violence now. We ask the good people of Crown Heights to pledge to work together for the safety and security of the community. As good people, we have a deep and abiding commitment to work together for the resolution of the problems within our community. We believe as well that the underlying issues of justice must be addressed effectively. We, the leaders of the Crown Heights, will form a coalition of community leaders that will meet regularly to resolve the immediate problems in the neighborhood and to develop a long-range plan for the future of Crown Heights. We will see to it that the wheels of justice move swiftly and fairly and that all grievances by any group are addressed. We ask the people of Crown Heights to restore a, a climate of mutual respect to the neighborhood and an appreciation for all of our differences and our similarities. We issue a special appeal to the youth of Crown Heights to join with us in restoring peace. It is your future that is at stake. And we will parenthetically have members of the youth of this community sitting with us on the coalition to work out the differences and problems in Crown Heights. Balance should be the catchword in Crown Heights. No single group is superior to another. No one is above the law. We ask the people of Crown Heights to join us in, public, in publicly rejecting lawless behavior by any individual and encouraging equal treatment for people of all racial, ethnic, and religious groups. As elected leaders, clergy, educators, community representatives, youth, we ask the people of Crown Heights to look toward the future. A peaceful community is the right of all people. It sets an example for our children, an example of tolerance and understanding. 
We offer our prayers to the family of young Gavin Cato and Aunt Cato and Angela Cato, victims of a terrible tragedy. We offer our condolences as well to the family of Yanko Roosevelt, the victim of blind hatred and violence. All good people in Crown Heights and throughout this city must take a stand. Must take a stand now. The violence must stop now. straight to the guys to help them out, but I guess you probably be ready to them up. Then um, the, amb the other ambulance, uh, uh, EMS came to the city ambulance. Yes. Yeah. And they took them to the guys. So you're saying that the private ambulance went to the, to the Jewish people first, to the Jewish young kids. First, right. You saw this? Yes, I did. I was there. What happened at that point? At that point, they, I think they were beating them up. I'm not sure. But I couldn't really get around. The cops were just pushing everybody all out. Okay, well, listen, what's your name? My name is Kevin Jones. Kevin Jones? Thanks very much. Uh, hey, it's okay. How you doing? Uh, what's your name? Sasha Peter. How do you spell your first name? T H A I A. Okay, uh, what exactly is the reason you kind of the discord between the Jewish community here and the black community? Because it's, it's basically, they really, the, 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 the politicians basically talk to the Jews, they inform them of what's ever going on. But when it comes down to us, there's nobody really coming to tell us what's going on in our own community. It's not only the Jewish community, it's for everybody. And it's nobody, like, even if it's just a community center where, let's say, Dinkins or Mr. Green or anybody just come, we can have a talk or meet and let us know what's going on in our community. It wouldn't be so bad. But they have things like that for Jewish people and they, they keep us out in the dark. All of them own these buildings. 
because but yet instead they're getting our money but they're not trying to put no no type of not trying to tell us what is the tell us how things are happening in our, in our own neighborhood. Why has there been trouble the last three nights? Why do you think? Because it's a long I'm tell you why. Why? because it's been a death it's been a death and, and no one is in jail. It's no justice. How, how, what would happen if it was the other way around? A black man would have been driving that car and hit two Jewish kids. The problem is an uh, ambulance came and they're just going to take the drive and leave two little kids. I mean, when those are children, man. You when we lose a life, we're still being victimized. I'm sorry. We're still being victimized with two lives, one destroyed and one li and lost. And we're, being, we're still the victims because we haven't been served justice. That's the right. Heights, between the Jews and the, and the black people in this community, there's, there's been a growing heat tension for years growing That's in this right. community. And it now exploded. It just exploded. What's Once, the reason behind the tension you're talking about? Racism. Like, racism. Basically racism. They don't like us. We don't like them. Or, or, or they don't like us. And, you know, we, we can walk their streets and, 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 you know, words and slurs. We'll be hearing things that us nigga go home, this to that, whatever, whatever. And then they come through here. Nothing happens to the Jews when they come through. They can march through here freely and, and nobody will hurt them. But if we go up there and a little group or set, you know, to, to, to confront them, then we, we get uh, victimized for that by the police and by the Jews. Every time we made a, a peaceful uh, attempt to make it a peaceful uh, protest on Kingston Avenue, the cops were there waiting with their sticks and, and waiting to beat us up. 71st owned oh, by the Jews. This week alone I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. We went up there to protest peacefully. We were, the cops were waiting to beat us up and, and before we even got close enough to even they, they, they ran us back and the Jews began throwing rocks first. And we, we retaliated. Wait, what is the root? What is, what is the reason behind the reason behind the problems between the Jews and the black folks in this community? We don't get respect. We don't, we don't get we don't get as we, the police is the reason, I'm gonna tell you now, because they, they come around here and victimize us because of them. The Jewish people have their own little Jewish patrol. They have, they have rights. Right. They got so much rights where they can come around here and interrogate us whenever they feel like it. Right. They, they, they carry sirens in their cars, and, and, they have they, they, they jump out their cars. They, they jump out their police cars and interrogate us like they're cops and treat us like we're, we're slime. And so when we when we counteract, we're, we're being victimized for counter. We have no rights. It's like we have no rights. And the cops are always on their side. If you go on Kingston Avenue right now, you'll see uh, they're doing reconstruction on the corner of Kingston and Eastern Parkway. And, and what do you see up there? A big blue wall. Blue represents the symbol and the color that the police wear because they are on their side. That's why. And they live right well, behind the what, what do you think is the solution to the to the problem? Solution. Justice. If we get justice for uh, uh, the, the, the children that were um, injured and killed, and do what they want then we can everywhere. we can we can possibly work something out. And what's justice? You want the driver arrested? Exactly. Saying? Arrested and charged with murder, manslaughter. You know what? He's not even New York. What if he's not arrested? He's what if he's not charged? No peace. No justice. No peace. They sent him back to where he came no from. No justice. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Anybody in Zoom, everybody says. Yeah. Let, let, me, let me say the reason that you have been invited in is because after I made some comments to these young people, which I will repeat for the benefit of the rest, uh, the first comments made by two young men, young man over here and Sean Joe here. What's your name? Earl Richard. Richard. Earl Richard. Earl and, and then Sean Joe joined in and said yes. The press should be in because they need to know that there are positive things being said and, and there are young people who are attempting to, uh, to, to, uh, to get things done. So that's why we decided to invite you in. When they asked, well, why weren't you in in the first place, we said because we thought those who organized this meeting and thought it would be uh, less inhibiting were the press not to be here. But these young people have indicated the desire to have you. That's why you're here. I started out by saying to the folks that I had come to listen to them, but before listening to what they had to say, I wanted to impress upon them how important they are. Now, I know that a moment's reflection will tell them that they're important because they really do constitute our future. And I said to them that on a day like today when the sky is blue and the sun is shining, uh, these people whose average age may be 18 or 19 or 14 or 15, they've got who knows, medical technology being what it is, 80, 90, 100 years to live. Even an old guy like me, I should give him another crack first, uh, since he was first up in the, he, he, 
Do you have something further you want to say at this moment? The conversation going on. Okay, go ahead. Let me first start. So my name is Lumumba Bandelli. I'm a 19 year old resident of Brooklyn. I want to. This is the closest most of us ever been to you. If this won't happen to open your eyes, we won't see Mr. Dinkins. We won't see Mr. Brown. We won't see the deputy mayor. Only time we see you is when you on the media. That's all the time we see you. We want to see you. It's 365 days you in the office. Please come to Brooklyn four times. Biggest drug problem. Yes. Flatbush. Yes. Lots of murder and drugs. Yes. Crown Heights. Lots of drugs and also. Come out here. We don't want you to go to um Queens where millions, I mean, people spend millions of dollars for one brownstone. Come where the ghettos at. This we gotta make the future. Without you showing us the future, we won't do nothing. We need somebody strong. We need to bring back, I mean, like people like the mayor, you, the vice president. Bring somebody to Brooklyn, spend a day, eight hours in Brooklyn to see what's going on. You know, this guy just stuff to come to our movement. Looking at this whole situation right now, what we're trying to concentrate on is this, I'm past the mayor, I'm not concentrating on the mayor. I want to concentrate on what's happening right now in Crime Heights and what we're going to do about it. That's what we got to concentrate on. And if you're going to do something, First of all, the youth got to realize that we got a lot of potential, we got a lot of things we got to pull together. We need to organize ourselves, we need to come together, sit down, and have a plan of action. The people that, that the powers that be that have us in a situation where in a Jewish neighborhood something happens and it's a borderline between Jewish and African American, and then we have to clash and we have to riot and the police going to come in. and to be not to keep order, but to be agitators right. to our young people. Right. That's how we feel they're agitators. Right. None of them look like me, most of them. If you walk down the street, most of them do not look like me. They don't understand me. So all they do is this to me. You know, push back and get back with yeah. sticks. But what we want is not just one police. We want it because we want to want We are our own protectors. We're not taking up from the police. They do their job, you know, but the job at hand is now we got gloves in the street, running up and down, we're still busting hands while we ain't talking. Okay, there was a planned demonstration there. Whenever there's a planned demonstration, any place we have to face it, we have to face it. And it always stands. There's nothing in that block. You go down to four blocks, you don't see no more. On my block where I work every day. And I don't believe that's the truth. Why? That's it. We just get a phone. First question we ask you is why? Them overall the police department. Let me, uh, uh, and, and I'll come back to you all, but you know, you got the night of the Thursday. Get out there to them brothers in a couple of minutes. <laughs> we want to see more than 30, dark. 60 to 100 brothers locked up in, in jail for bullshit or killed. That's the bottom line. I don't care about what's going on with the Jewish community right now. You see, they got this. I'm talking about my brother. That I, when I walk out the street, he might be beating the head. What can we do right now? Okay, just to make some decisions on how the brothers are going to be treated out in the street. See, they're not here to talk for themselves. But we're supposed to be representing you. Okay, and when we walk out of here, we got to be able to walk with, with Mayor Dinkins and the commissioner saying that, look, we taking back this. Brothers, we standing for deal and the anger. See, because there's a lot of displaced anger out there. Okay, a lot. And a lot of the displaced anger boils down to, I see in this community, they have certain rights that we don't have. What's up with that? We need to deal with that first. this place that we surround Mayor Dinkins, that they understand that he's coming out for us. Because see, what I heard was that he went to the hospital first. Okay, and that ain't the deal. He's here. So he is the brother. And he's the brother mayor. All those things look a little sloppy right now. What's worse? 20 brothers killed? 100 in jail? For bullshit? Okay, what is worse? What is worse? Right now, the longer we take it here, the more possibility them is gonna be done out there. I'm not even talking to you, I'm talking to all of us. You know what I'm saying? I understand, I understand.
come back in a circle. I want to try to keep it in a circle, my brother. I think a young lady had your hands up. Someone else want to I want to say something. Let's get some other people. Else get the I just want to say that I was in a meeting with the commissioner uh, uh, about half an hour ago. I was, and, and, uh, and I've, I've lived through some things too, all right? And I, and I grew up in Harlem as a little kid because I was shot back on the corner. And, uh, you know, and I run, run from the cops now and then, and all of that. So, I don't want you all who live here in Brown Heights to think that, that, uh, that those of us who do not live here now, especially those of us who are in the have no concept of what you go through. That's why I'm here in the first place. Because I care about you, and I care desperately about you, and we're not supposed to go out here in a fashion now that gets anybody hurt. I'm not talking about me. I got nine million cops take care of me. I'm talking about you all, and all of us, and I'm talking about the children who may injure some of us and themselves be arrested. That's in no one's interest. So we're going to go forth in a fashion, and we're not going to. I'm not able to go out there and say this man who's driving this car is going to be arrested tonight. I can't say that. I can't make any promises that I can't deliver, and I will not make a promise that I cannot deliver. But part of what we hope to do is go out there and say, whatever's going on and the problems people have, let's cool it. Let's cool it now. And, and, and I, what I'm asking you to do is to help me do that. That's basically talking at you instead of talking. Well, well, we can we can we can talk we can talk to them, but to talk to them instead of at them, as you put it, if that means to tell them precisely what they want to hear. Whether it is true or not, I don't think that's recommended because there's always a tomorrow. The tomorrow people say, but yesterday you said. So it's important that we go out there. The purpose of my presence here is not to solve all the problems, not necessarily to ease all attention, although obviously I wish I could, but to demonstrate a concern. That's why I'm here. I don't have to be here. I could set the police commissioner and four deputy mayors. I could sit at City Hall or Gracie Mansion. I'm here because I care. And it's not the first time I've been here. And so I don't want to hear any one of you again say, come to this community, you ought to come to the community, because I've been here. What I want to do now is I want you to give us the ability, for those who, Richard Green, where are you? And, and you and your folks to get us organized and tell me how best we think we ought to handle this. And I ask you young people to take some direction from Richard, please, so that we can go out in a fashion that will be useful. Yes? Yes, ma'am. I am today issuing a proclamation authorizing a $10,000 reward for information leading to the arrest and conviction of the killer of Yanko Rosenbaum. In Crown Heights, Mayor Deacon's reward offer provoked even more anger from his son who gathered on Eastern Parkway to protest the verdict. I'm screaming Yanko Rosenbaum's words from his grave. Why did you do this? Why did you let 19 killers go free? Why haven't you made a, a special investigation into Crown Heights like you did with Howard Beach, like you did with Bensonhurst? Is Jewish blood cheap? Would this be a verdict of guilty? Cars would be burning now. Windows would be flying and people would have been hurt. But with emotions running so high, the mostly peaceful protest at times erupted into verbal confrontation. Why, if the black community knows who those 19 are, don't they turn them over? If they really, really mean it, and they really want peace, and they really say they know they're guilty, they know who they are, why don't they turn them over? And without the strong police presence, at times it appeared it might have boiled over into violence as Hasidics tried to chase down teenagers who taunted them with rocks and bottles from rooftops, only to be pushed back from police who were trying to keep the demonstration from spilling over into the rest of the neighborhood. The teenage defendant arrived flanked by lawyers and surrounded by family. There were the media trappings of a big indictment Ironic in this case because Nelson's being treated under federal rules as a juvenile, which means details are supposed to be secret. Not guilty. 
It's also ironic because Nelson was publicly charged and tried in state court two years ago as an adult. He was arrested during Crown Heights rioting after being identified by dying Jewish scholar Yankel Rosenbaum. A bloody knife was found in Nelson's pocket. He confessed to police. He was found not guilty. The blood was on the knife. The knife was in the pocket. And unfortunately, justice was not done. But interviewed last night on Eyewitness News, Nelson said now he's a victim. I've been through this before. I was acquitted for it. All charges. Now I gotta go through it again. After today's brief hearing, in which Nelson again pleaded not guilty, and which was sketched before the media was asked to leave, his mother said she finds the new prosecution shocking. Former federal prosecutor Dan Richmond, now a professor at Fordham Law School, says to convict on civil rights charges, prosecutors can't prove only that Nelson was the killer. They have to show something more than that. There has to show us a specific intent on the part of the defendant to interfere with the constitutional right of the victim. In this case, the right would have been to walk on the street. He has pled not guilty. He is innocent of the charges. And if anybody's civil rights have been violated, it's this man's civil rights that's been violated. Stacy, a neighborhood in Brooklyn marks the anniversary of a frightening and tragic event. Five years ago today, Riots broke out in Crown Heights. The accidental death of little Gavin Cato, who was hit by a car, ignited it all. Before it was over, rabbinical student Yankel Rosenbaum was stabbed to death. Tim Fleischer is live in Crown Heights. Tim. Roz, unquestionably, the atmosphere here in Crown Heights is much different than it was five years ago. So is the scene. On this very corner, there were probably more police officers at the time than there were residents. But today, five years later, there were vivid memories of the past. And I'm sure during here on this spot in Crown Heights, here is where they remembered a young rabbinical student killed during the bloody riots five years ago. The striking out violently against a person because of his race, his color, his creed, his sexual orientation, because he or she may be different, is absolutely intolerable. Remembering too the grandfather of Gavin Cato. The seven-year-old's death sparked the riots after he was run down by a car in the motorcade of the Lubavitch Grand Revy. In the violence that erupted then, Yanko Rosenbaum was also killed, a murder his brother still questions. The passage of time has neither, hasn't made it any more easy to come to grips with or to understand that such a horrific set of events could have ever happened. But just last week, five years later, Charles Price was arrested, accused of inciting some of that violence. You cannot allow bias crimes such as this to, to uh, end unsolved. Uh, there were witnesses. There were people involved. Today, in this community, there are signs of healing, obvious messages of hope, and people again working together. Raphael James has lived and worked here 26 years. We're finally talking about the things that should have been talked about for the past 20 years before this, this incident happened, you know. It's been building up. That's why it happened, you know. A lot of things have happened in this community that were never addressed. And there's the memory of Yanko Rosenbaum. But he wanted them to be positive, to take out from his memory, from his legacy, something positive from the future which can ensure that the future will be better than the past. Gavin Cato's grandfather, who says that he travels a road of peace, believes that there should have been more involvement by...